Hi everyone, welcome back to Learning with Leah. I'm so glad that you could join me again today. Today we are going to continue in our series on tenses. And today we're going to talk about the past continuous tense. We're going to talk about how to use it, how to make sentences using it, and when to use them correctly um, in a sentence. So let's get started. All right, so first of all, what is the past continuous tense? So of course, this is used to talk about past events, specifically talking about continuing action that happened in the past. So when we use the past continuous tense, we are talking about an action that continued for a while. It is complete now, but in the past, it did continue for a while. In, so if we look here at our, at our timeline, this is now. So any action that happened in the past that continued, we use the past continuous tense. Now, how do we know when to use simple past and when to use past continuous? I will show you. So with simple past, it's when one action occurs and it, it was at one moment. It did not continue, it was just one moment. For example, at 6 p.m. I ate at 6 p.m. Okay, it was one action, it happened, it is finished. But if it, something happened for a continued period, right, more than just one moment, it happened over a length of time, um, for example, from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m., you could say, I was sleeping from 11 to 6. We are using the past continuous. So we use the simple present. If it was just one action, it's done and over with. If it is an action that continues, then we use the past continuous tense. All right. Um, but it has to be complete now. All right. Let's look at the different times when we use this in sentences. All right, first, for conditions. When we are talking about the condition, the, um, the atmosphere, or um, how an experience is happening, um, when we are explaining a situation, we can use the past continuous tense. Let me show you an example. The sun was shining on my wedding day. Okay, um, the sun was shining. We're using the past continuous tense. We use the past continuous because it's explaining the condition. It's explaining um, the situation and the environment of, um, of this day. Okay, so this, again, this happened. The sun was shining. It was not just one moment, right? It was over the whole day of my wedding day. All right, so that is the condition. Secondly, we can talk about the past continuous tense when we talk about interrupted action. All right, so let me, let's read the example. I was baking a cake when she arrived. I was baking a cake when she arrived. So we can use the past continuous tense when an action interrupts the continued action. So let me, let me explain. So, like I said, past continuous is when something happens for a length of time. Interrupted action means within this time, something interrupts it. So, for example, while I was baking a cake, right, in the middle, in the middle of this experience, in the middle of me baking a cake, um, she arrived that broke up the action. It interrupted the action, right? Maybe I could say, while I was teaching, while I was teaching, somebody knocked on the door, for example. So um, if something interrupts your continued action, then we can use the past continuous tense. All right, number three, for a specific time, if we are doing something over a, a, a continued um, action, we can use 
it should talk about a specific time. For example, I was studying at 8 p.m., right? For example. Number four, for a habitual action. I talked about this when I did my present continuous tense, but we can use continuous tense to talk about habitual actions, whether it's in the past continuous or the present continuous. All right, for example, Billy was always eating in class. All right, that is a habitual action. That means it is, um, it is something that occurs often, right? It, it happens a lot. So when we use always or the word constantly, many times we will use the continuous tense for this. All right, number five, planned action. I was going to make dinner, but I fell asleep. All right, anytime we have something that we planned in the past, it was a planned event or um, situation, we can use the past continuous. I was going to make dinner, but I fell asleep. Oh, I was going to call you yesterday, but I ran out of time. Okay, and number six for a request. Many times in English, we actually use the past continuous tense to give a polite request. For example, I was wondering if you could give me some directions, right? If I am lost and I don't know what to do, I might ask someone, hi, uh, um, would you mind? Um, I was wondering if you could give me some directions. I'm not sure what to do. Or I was wondering if um, you could help me with this question. I'm not sure what to put for the answer. All right, this is a polite way to request um, information or request for help. All right, so these are the main six, um, six uh, situations in which we can use the past continuous tense. All right, now let's look at how to conjugate them and how to use the past continuous tense in, in the affirmative, in the negative, and with questions. All right, past continuous is the same as present continuous with only one change. And that change is that the be verb is going to be shown in past tense. So the rule is the same as present continuous, except for the be verb is changed to past tense instead of present tense. All right, so we always start with our subject, right, in every tense, except for in questions, we always start with the subject, and then we add our be verb. For past continuous, we have to make sure it's in past tense. All right, and then we add our verb that has an ing for the ending. All right, so let's look how to conjugate these. All right, so the biggest thing we need to remember is the past tense for be. All right, so the past tense for be, be is was, were, was, were, were, and were, okay? Of course, the verb for the ing is going to be the same in all of the different persons, okay? So let's read these together. I was eating, you were eating, he was eating, we were eating, you were eating, and they were eating. So again, the only thing you really need to remember is this be verb. And the only ones that are different are first person singular and third person singular. That is was, second, um, second person, and, and all of the plurals are were. All right, let's look at some examples now. I was mowing the grass at 5 p.m. You were exercising on Sunday afternoon. She was cooking rice. We were talking when Jill called. That's an interrupted action. Right? We were talking when she called. They were laughing at his jokes. All right. So all of these, we start with our subject. We add the be verb. Okay, was, were, was, were, were. And then our ing ending, ing, 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 okay? Again, very similar to the present continuous, except that we are going to be using the past for verb.
or for the B. <laughs> All right, so now let's look at negative sentences. All right, so for the negative, the only thing that we need to do is add our negative, and that is not, right? Just as we did in our present continuous tense, the only thing that we have to do to make it negative is to add not between the be verb and the ing verb. All right, it's pretty simple. So as we can see here, I was not looking, you were not looking, he, she, it was not looking, we were not looking, you were not looking, they were not looking. The only thing that we do is add our negative, and that makes it a negative sentence. All right, so let's look at these examples. I wasn't joking. You weren't going anywhere. He wasn't asking for money. We weren't paying attention. They weren't sleeping when I came in. All right, as we can see, we have our subject, we have our to be verb, our negative not, and then our ing verb. You might notice that I put contractions for on all of these examples. All right, so let's look at these contractions now. So was not, we say wasn't, wasn't. Again, wasn't, okay? Were not, we say weren't, weren't, okay? Wasn't, weren't. I've said this before, but in um, most cases with Native American speak or Native English speakers, but I'm American, um, we use contractions all the time in our oral in our oral English. Um, now, with writing, many times we try to be more formal, but when we're speaking, we're going to use contractions in our sentences. So this is definitely more natural, and it's very important to learn these contractions. Okay. All right, so make sure you remember wasn't and weren't. All you have to do is add not to your sentences and then make it a contraction, and then you'll have a past continuous sentence in the negative. All right, now that we've done the affirmative and the negative, let's look at questions now. All right, so hopefully by now you remember how to form a question. We always switch the first verb we have, which is normally a helping verb, and our subject. We change the place so that the subject comes second. All right, so we are going to start with our be verb. Again, that's always in the past. Then our subject, then our, our ing verb. Okay, was I studying? Were you studying? Was he, she, or it studying? Were we studying? Were you studying? Were they studying? All right, so as you can see, we always start with that helping verb there. Then we add our subject. Then we finish with the ing verb. So let's look at more examples. Was I speeding? Were you practicing last night? Was she looking at me? Were we breaking the law? Were they going to the movies? All right, so we always start with our, our be verb. Again, because it's past continuous, we have to remember to change it and keep it in the past tense. Then we add our subjects, then we add our ing verbs. All right, hopefully this, um, hopefully you get this now and you have a good understanding of this tense but I want you guys to practice. You did an amazing job last time with commenting your answers below um, in a comment, so I'm gonna continue doing that in most of my videos. So let's do some practice now. All right, let's get to some practice. So um, what I have here are eight questions that I want you to complete, I want you to write the sentence, comment below, and then I will comment if there are any mistakes. I will make sure that you have a good sentence. All right, so let's do an example first. So what I have for all of these questions is I will have a subject, I will have a no if I want it to be negative, 
um, and I will have the verb as well. So you can see this one should be negative. That's the subject, the verb, subject, the verb.